I'm Vicki Hogarth and welcome to Southwest Magazine. I'm joined today by the MP for New Brunswick Southwest, John Williamson. Thanks for being here again, John. It's my pleasure. I think we do this every two months, which is so wonderful. About that, it's and, and we're now back in Parliament and flying home on the weekend, so it's good to be here. I touched down just a few hours ago and uh, was hoping to get a haircut, so that's first thing tomorrow morning <laughs> going up to St. Stephen to get that done. So it's uh, so last time you were here, and it's great to know that there's been progress since just two months ago, uh, you were talking to us about a uh, dredge debris pilot, North Head, in yes. Grand Manan, uh, and, and we went over to, to check it out and see what we could find out. Um, and from doing that and hearing from you and hearing from the federal government, they said that Greenfield Construction was actually responsible to remove it and having just been there this weekend, I yes. see that at least it started. Yeah. Can you give us an update on, on where that's at? So just take a step back for viewers that might not know what we're talking about. Um, there was a federal um, infrastructure wharf project that uh, Department of Fisheries and Oceans was uh, responsible for along with Public Works Canada to dredge the North Head Harbor um, and do some work, wharf work there. And the first step, of course, was to remove I don't know, a ton. I mean, we're talking tens of thousands of tons of, of debris. And for the last two summer, the dredge work was done, but it had piled up and piled up and piled up. And by my uh, calculations, there was something like 30,000 tons of dredge debris there. It just sat there. Radio silence from both the company. Uh, I call it Atcon Greenfield, because of course it's the old taxpayer busting Atcon company that fleeced taxpayers of New Brunswick for over $50 million. And then somehow this company uh, reconstituted itself and managed to get a federal project underbidding uh, local contractors by four or five million dollars. And everyone's wondering, how are they going to do this? Mm. Well, we began to get a sense that they were going to do it by not doing it. Uh, the, the, the dredge material sat there and sat there for two summers. And we had been working, I'd been working quietly behind the scenes to try to push it through to make sure residents, their, their concerns were, were addressed. Uh, but finally enough was enough and blew the whistle on it. And thanks to shows like yours, along with other media outlets talking about it, uh, we finally saw some heavy equipment getting going back to the island. And for the last couple of weeks, that dredged pile has been uh, getting removed. Now there's a lot more work to, to be done and we can't break out the celebration yet because there's more dredge work to, to be done. Um, I, I worry that the budget's gonna go up. In fact, that's something I'm watching uh, on from the Public Accounts Committee uh, to see if the companies can be paid more and more. I worry they are going to be paid more, even though they shouldn't be. They bid on this and part of the contract required them to remove that, the, the, uh, the toxic material from the island. That's uh, so far, it's been, I'm told it's largely been staying on the island. So some of the cleaner stuff. So we're gonna keep watching this to make sure it's done and done responsibly. It doesn't become an environmental mess, but some, some good progress here, I think that um, is is giving us hope that the work will be done and done responsibly. So mm -hmm. that's a, it's a step in the right direction. But, you know, shame on them both. Um, the, f the federal government let this go on far, far too long. And it wasn't until uh, a spotlight was, was, you know, really put on the lack of work that they began to, I think, communicate behind the scenes with the uh, Atcon Greenfield company mm -hmm. to, to get it going. And and I'm, I'm pleased they are because for residents in North Head, uh, it was a real blight on the landscape. And I think for business owners, uh, as well as residents, it was just it's something they saw every single day. And, and I don't think any community should have to put up with that. And, and I think they rightly felt abandoned by the federal government and the company. So I'm, you know, I'm glad we collectively cracked the whip and, uh, and, and got it done. But we are gonna stay on it. I think we're gonna be talking about it again, unfortunately, to try to keep pushing them to make sure they get it done and to do so at the budget they said they would. Right, because it was two summers lost for business yeah. too when you're looking at, uh, I know you originally sent me a picture of you were in, yeah. enjoying a beverage at the Old Well Cafe and your view was this debris pile yeah. and we went over and had pizza at Post Office yeah. Pizza and normally you can see this beautiful view and I was happy to see just this past weekend being there that the pile's still there yeah. but there is yeah. this narrow view to the ocean now and uh, at least it is progress. But. Well, it's yeah, it's light at the end of the tunnel, I think is the best way to put it. Whereas uh, two months ago, it was just 
darkness. And, mm -hmm. and so, and, you know, res emails from residents weren't being returned. I know one business is suing, at least one business is, is suing the, the federal government. And I think, you know, I think Ottawa felt they, they didn't have to respond to anyone because of that, but that wasn't the right approach to take as well because it affected the whole, the whole community. So mm -hmm. there's some light at the end of the tunnel, but I, as I said, I think there's more work that has to be done and we want to make sure it's done properly. Yeah, I think anyone from this region could say missing just one summer yeah. of business could, could cripple everything you've worked so hard, so well, to miss two. And, and that's it, and I think people want to understand this. Imagine if, if you left your front door or your community and every day you saw this pile of rubble getting larger and larger, no answers were coming back from the federal government, it would, it would irritate anyone. And of course, you know, uh, Graham and Ann, like other parts of this uh, of this of this province, it's a, it's a seasonal tourist um, um, uh, time when when the when tourists are in here, and if you don't take advantage of that, you lose it. And mm -hmm. uh, and so you know, I I think because things opened up and Graham and Ann's such an interesting place to go to, there was still traffic. But as the owner of of one of the cafes said, they didn't have that like what a great spot. Let's stop mm -hmm. here for uh, a coffee or a drink and just look at this view. They they lost that view, unfortunately. Um, the businesses there are strong and they're and they're vibrant. They're, I think they're going to they're going to continue, obviously. But you know, it did have an impact, and mm -hmm. we need to make sure that doesn't happen again. Do you think um, your spotlight and the media spotlight on the greenfield construction yeah. involvement um, might make the federal government think twice before giving a contract this big to? Well. Well, I, I, in this company, I think it should. I mean, we're now discovering that this. Um, uh, company, the Atcon Greenfield, they have problems in Alberta not paying their bills. I know that in other parts of the Maritimes, they when, when they finally left, the local communities were not happy with how the project went. Whereas, you know, the local companies, they understand that they're ambassadors uh, on behalf of the federal government and they want to make sure the work they done they, they do is done well. And they don't leave a bad taste uh, in the communities they're working in, and and so they they tend to be much more open and responsive, um, and and more and more transparent. Uh, and they 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 get the work done, and and in this case the work stopped I think because the company was has is it was and continues to haggle for more for more money, which is why I can do something in Parliament it's called an order paper question. I can put a paper in, ask questions, the government is required to answer me. It's a bit like question period, but you actually get an answer. And it's, it's, I'm going to begin to ask questions. What was the budget? How much more has been spent? What is the timeline? What is the timeline now? And just find out. This information will come out over time anyway, but this, this allows me to kind of speed it up and get a sense of what's going on. So when I get that information, I'll let you know. And since we're on the topic of our beloved islands, uh, I was at Whitehead Island yes. this past weekend. I know the federal government um, put some funding towards the Whitehead Community Center and yes. Cafe. It's so exciting yeah. to be there. Um, and I know you're just back in New Brunswick yeah. now, and I'm sure you'll make a trip over. Yeah. Uh, but what a special addition. It, it is. And so six years ago, I think pretty much this month or this season, the old little convenience store that was there closed down. Now, I remember going to the island and knocking on door and talking to people at that, at that little that little store, and when it went, when it when it closed, it was it was kind of the central point on Whitehead that disappeared. And I was involved um, when the plans were first drawn up. I I, I met with um, some of the locals on the island to talk about it and and uh, and to take the package up to them uh, for for consideration. So I I was aware that it was happening. I was not able to attend uh, the opening, and I regret that because every election, I go to Whitehead, I knock on doors, I've met countless um, families there. It would have been fun to see them all at once. Now, I'm happy to say as well, I've been to Whitehead between elections as well. It's not just a place <laughs> I go to at election time. Uh, two summers ago, I went over for, for, uh, for, for a couple of days and I'm, I'm due back for another one. It is, I will say this, if you've not had a chance to go to Whitehead, go. Mm -hmm. It is a magical place. It is, it's, they have a, they have a, a, a ferry. And it's it's the it's the type of ferry that even at noon hour they stop the service for an hour and a half. The, the 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 men and women that work on it head home with their lunchbox or their coffees, and and they and they they have lunch at home. And they walk back. So so you have to plan it out. But it's just a pleasant place to go for a walk, go for a drive, a bike ride in mm -hmm. particular. Uh, and now there's a little community cafe 
uh, which I'm looking forward to uh, to exploring on my next trip. Uh, the ferry was packed, I have to say, yes. for, this, <laughs> for the grand opening of the Whitehead uh, Community yeah. Center and Cafe. Uh, That's so great. many foot passengers coming from yeah. Grand Manan. It was quite emotional to see this huge group of people just yeah. walk from the ferry and the, the center's right, right there. Right there, oh, I know. Um, yeah. But they are, it's also the addition of washrooms now for if you're just a visitor That's is right. nice too. And I guess. Which is helpful when you knock on doors. Yes. And I'll say, I'll, I have to say this because if I don't, I'll get a note. Uh, I know there is wharf work and dredging that's needed uh, at Whitehead, and I'm working on it. So okay. I just I, I just put that out there because in the past when I talk about Whitehead and what's going on, I always get a note from the local fishing families there about the work. So I'm aware of it, and we're on it. And I'm going to put this out there too because we never say this. I think it's just uh, implied. But if people have questions for you, you're, you've made a point of coming every two months to sit down um, and take my questions. Yes. But if people have questions, they can send them in too. Just news at chco.tv and I'll make sure well, thank we you. ask them on this show. And, and of course, I have uh, a parliamentary email which is available um, um, on our webpage. I won't give it out here, it's, it's a little long. Uh, as well, people can write a letter to me. It's postage free, John Williamson, House of Commons, Ottawa. That's all you need and it'll get up to me as well. We do get a lot of correspondence that way as well. I do, I do go through it. I often, at least one day a week, I have to sit in the House of Commons for at least eight hours, and that's when my team gives me my stack of materials to go through, and it often includes um, correspondence from the, from, from the riding as well. So, yeah, so I'm, you know, it's, it, it's all part of it, so whether it comes from you or, or from constituents directly, it is an important part of the job, just keeping up with what's going on. Oh, so my next question is motivated, um, somewhat selfishly by my work here at CHCO, but it, again on the topic of crippling business, uh, the Meta News Block yeah. um, in response to Bill C-18, uh, obviously this is month three now yeah. um, of news stations across Canada not being able to post any content yeah. on Facebook. CHCO, uh, we thought because we didn't share links originally, we thought it was a link tax. Yeah. Uh, we didn't realize it would block all information. Um, last yeah. week there was a a gunman in the St. Stephen area. Um, that was the subject of an alert ready. Yeah. I use my own personal Facebook page to get out this information yeah. now. But uh, it's been problematic yeah. on many levels. It hurts business, yes. I think we've been lucky that we're small. I'll use us as an example. Um, we've been lucky because we're small, so our viewers have just followed us yeah. wherever we tell them. We're used to jumping through hurdles to <clears throat> being uh, independent. Yeah. But. Uh, I, I fear as we get closer to the new year, we're expecting Google to follow yeah, suit. That's, that's what we've been told. Yeah. That could be YouTube. Yeah. Um, do, is there any progress in Ottawa of finding a resolution? So, um, again, for the audience, you call it a meta or Facebook news block. I, mean, I call it, this is a Justin Trudeau mistake. They, the, the, the federal liberals thought they could strong arm social media companies to um, sign a check with no dollar sign on it and they would compel them to uh, to do so uh, and Facebook is just the first I fear to say well okay then we're out we won't we won't we won't we'll get out of this business this business is not that important to us uh, it's they say it's a two-way street there's a benefit that goes both ways um, and I think there's, there's some truth to that. Where, where I'm, you know, I'm very sympathetic to kind of the small, nimble, nimble, independent news outlets in this riding, but across the, the country. They have been hurt by this. They're often the, the news services that are filling in the, uh, the news because um, the CTVs, the CBCs are pulling out. You know, they, they, they cover the news from Fredericton only, for example, or across, you know, they're pulling out of cities, uh, mid-sized small cities across across the uh, the country and so it's small local television like CHCO or small um, online news services that are that are filling in and they're all being kneecapped um, by this. And the next could well be Google and Google will be taking, if you do a news search or if you do a search there's not going to be any news links. I mean that's going to begin to I think impact now um, Students that are trying to do research, for example, people that want to just find out what's happening in their in their communities, that could be gone next. And of course, you mentioned as well, YouTube could well uh, could well stop carrying Canadian news as well. Um, you know, I know people can say, well, 
Meta and, and YouTube should do it, but doing that is going to, because of the federal government law, the way it was written, open them up to having to pay tens of millions more. I mean, the, the, the link tax is actually outrageous because if you, the, 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 the law is written in such a way that Google could be on the hook just for having the link appear on its website even if you don't click it. Mm -hmm. So it's, for these companies, it's, uh, it's, an, it's an unknown liability. Um, and the Australians, which is often cited, they passed um, a, a law that wanted these companies to pay to help journalists. But they, theirs was written that it, it allowed the companies to negotiate directly with, with media. Our federal government, the Liberal government, didn't do that. Mm. Um, and so it, it, it puts Ottawa right in the middle of this. And again, the way it was written, there is an unlim potentially an unlimited downside for these mm -hmm. companies, so they're out. And that's, okay. that's terrible because, and again, I'm not siding with social, the social media companies mm -hmm. um, on, on this because you know, they, they have had an impact on, on news services, but the way the Trudeau Liberals wrote this law, um, in this country there's been a blackout. The Australians were able to figure it out with social media mm -hmm. companies and the news continued. I mean, there was a couple days there was, there was a bit of a dust up, yeah. but it passed. But as you said, we're now into th month three of this and I see no resolution coming out of Ottawa. Now, for the last couple of weeks, we've been distracted by a, a lot of news that's been happening with respect to uh, in allegations about Indian agents operating and potentially killing someone in this country. Then we had that outrageous um, guest in the in the gallery of the House of Commons, the the, the former SS officer, um, when the, the head the president of Ukraine was here, and then of course more recently we've had the the um, the outbreak of, of war in in Israel and Gaza. So the Parliament has been consumed by their event, so it has not been a top of mind issue. But my sense is uh, the Liberals aren't getting ready to fix their legislation. And that's the only thing that I think is going to cause this to uh, be fixed. We're going to have to rewrite the law to allow, to either cap it, to, to send a signal to companies that they will know what their financial obligation is, because right now it's, it's a black hole. But the fact that, that Google is now signaling um, they're out is real problem, because they were thought to be kind of the the good cop, if, mm -hmm. if, if Facebook was the bad cop who just bailed out, Google has been negotiating for months now with the federal government, and it looks like they're out as well. Okay. And that's, that's going to be a real problem. It, it means that, you know, okay, you can work around Facebook, but if suddenly you're, you know, at, at your computer, you want to find out what's happening or what's, what's going on with the story, and I do it all the time. Like, yeah. I do it all the time. And if those news sites don't appear, I mean, that's, it means that, you're basically stuck. I mean, you 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 will continue to have access to current news on the web page of, you mm. know, CBC, but you can't go back and look at archive news, and that's uh, that's that's something else in a, you know, in a free and democratic society, you, you should be able to find old news easily, but this law could make that this liberal law could make that very very hard to do. Well, we're definitely uh, watching with uh, knowing the impact that it's already having mm -hmm. on us. Um, we will be paying close attention. Yeah. Um, you brought up Israel. I think a lot of us Canadians are, are watching the news and yeah. just in horror uh, yeah. of what's happening. Um, in what ways is Canada doing our part? I think we want, all want to feel like as a country yeah. we are, are standing on the right side of history. Yeah. Well, look, it has been, it's, it's a, the Middle East is a tough part of the world, and I we see right now, and I think this is good, that the vast majority of parliamentarians um, are standing with the government of Canada. I think I think the Prime Minister has uh, he has he has um, spoken out on the on the on not only the the. Uh, the desire to stand with Israel, but also the obligation Israel has to ensure its uh, its borders are safe and its people aren't threatened. Now, it is complicated because, of course, um, between the Israeli army and the Hamas terrorists, 
you have the Palestinians who are in, in Gaza uh, as well. And in many cases, they're, they're stuck there. Um, the border with Egypt is, is closed. And so the Israelis are urging people to move to the southern half of, of Gaza, which many are doing. Uh, but it's also not a big place as well. Um, what, what people shouldn't forget, I think, is that what, 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 what the Hamas terrorists do is they put the Palestinians between them and the Israeli soldiers. And that's the problem that, uh, that, that, that this conflict is, this war is, 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 is going to mean, I think, um, a lot of unnecessary deaths because people cannot not get out. Um, look, I do think Hamas needs to be... Hamas is ISIS. I mean, Hamas, though you can, the way they butchered um, men, women, children, uh, kidnapping hundreds of people, uh, and, and I don't mean just killing, like literally butchered, uh, they need to be dealt with the same way the West dealt with, with ISIS. Um, and, you know, that's... The, the, the Israelis, I, I, I know, will do everything they can to minimize uh, innocent loss of life, but it's going to be a rough go for them. And to date, we've seen, I think, the two leading leaders in North America, President Biden, along with Trudeau, standing side by side with Israel. Um, you know, they're the they're the victims in this uh, in this in this conflict. I know people can say, well, Palestinians deserve a homeland. Well, all right, but time and time again, the leadership, the Palestinian leadership, has not only uh, rejected any kind of two-state solution. They've never put an alternative on the on the table. And when Israelis hear from the river to the sea, that is code for wipe them out. That is code for eliminating the state of Israel. And that can't be allowed to stand. Israel has a right to defend itself, and the Jewish people have the right to a homeland. And so if, uh, if, if terror organizations in that part of the world are going to try to wipe out the Jews, there's going to be a response. And I'm, you know, I think, I think we're seeing a very strong response from the Americans who have sent in not one but two aircraft carriers uh, as well. The, the, uh, the British Prime Minister is there, has been there the last couple of days. So, but it's going to be, it's going to be horrific. Mm -hmm. um, war is always a terrible thing. And I think people should hope for the best and pray for the best for innocents on both, both sides because there are, there's no doubt that there are innocent families in Gaza, just as there are innocents in, uh, innocent families uh, in, in, in Israel. And, you know, I would like to see um, an exit for families that want to get out of Gaza, whether it's a, some sort of refugee camp in Egypt. Um, there should be a path for them to get out. Uh, I don't believe there should be a ceasefire. That's, that would be akin to just telling the Israelis, you have, no, uh, you have no recourse to eliminate Hamas. But I recognize these are difficult uh, decisions, but I am pleased to see the unity that we do see uh, with the state of Israel. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think I'm still, it's, it's, the shock is still in me. I, it doesn't feel real uh, when you're watching it. It just yeah. feels like. Yeah. And you know, I, I don't, I think, I think we have to be careful as things unfold. We saw, we saw some fake news this week when um, a hospital was hit and right away um, media outlets um, in North America and elsewhere took the word of Hamas uh, and blamed the Israeli military. But it is since I think the evidence is pretty conclusive that it was a misfired rocket from another terror organization in, uh, in, in Gaza, I think with the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Um, you know, but that, even that misreporting prompted um, protest all through the Middle East, and that was incorrect. Uh, it was, it was, it was wrong news, and so everyone just needs to, you know, figure things out without, without jumping to, to conclusions. Look, I mean, and particularly Hamas, which is, which has made no secret of its desire to kill as many Israelis as possible. The thing with Hamas is they don't mind killing as many Palestinians as possible as well. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's the, that's the type of organization we have here, it was designated uh, a terror organization by the Kretchen liberals almost 20 years ago. This is, this is long standing. 
uh, and, and it has become a barbaric, satanic group that needs to be eliminated. Um, I apologize for pivoting ungracefully, but we have a, just under two minutes left, and I did want to get um, some information from you on the latest with MAID. I know that there was an important vote. Yes. Um, so, well, uh, there was a vote in the House of Commons this week to uh, stop the move that the Government of Canada has us on to, in the new year, allow euthanasia for people that have uh, mental health challenges. Um, this, I think, is shocking to a lot of Canadians that uh, what began as a program to provide some help for people that were uh, near to death and wanted to opt for assisted death um, has now morphed into a program that could be provided to Canadians that have a mental health challenge, which which I think is completely unacceptable. This is going to happen. Uh, it it seems unless unless there's a solution from the Liberal government in the new year. So we, there was a bill that was put forward by a Conservative MP to um, not allow the state sanctioning the, the the state killing of people who opted for um, for for made um, while suffering from mental health illness instead to help them with with treatment while it was a close vote um, and and about seven or eight I think it was eight eight liberals is what the papers are reporting voted um, with us the bill nonetheless went went down for defeat um, as conservatives we're vowing that should we form the next government we will we will change the law if the liberals don't change it beforehand because I think people are just I, I think people can be very sympathetic about those that are near death and, 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 and suffering about alternatives. Um, but I think the idea that, that a young person who's in a dark place could, could opt for uh, euthanasia. Uh, and, and now when the regime, it, it's, it's something that you can get done very, very quickly. Uh, and so it's time to, I think, tap the brakes on this and, and say, wait a second, is this really where we want to go as a society where people who are suffering from a not a, not a, an illness, an immediate illness that's going to that's going to end their life, but a but a mental illness. Say, wait a second, this seems this seems wrong to me. Well, John, thank you so much for the latest update for coming in today. I always appreciate when you're here, and I look forward to the next time. Well, my pleasure. Some heavy topics, particularly at the at, at the back end, and that's you know these are some of the things that we as that we have to grapple with. You know, it's it's I'm you know on on the Israeli one. This is a very very difficult one for for uh, leaders in the region, but also I think for, for our Prime Minister and for, and for Biden. And you know, I'll leave this note, this is, this is where we do see, we do see a lot of um, support in Parliament for what the Government of Canada has done. That there are voices on the, on, you know, that, that, are, that, are, that disagree with, with, with the Prime Minister, but as Conservatives we're trying to show him that there's a lot of support across the aisle for, uh, for, for him on, on Israel. And I think President Biden's done the same thing in the U.S. I think that's, I think that's important. Well, we always appreciate uh, your insight. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. My guest today has been the MP for New Brunswick Southwest, John Williamson. I'm Vicki Hogarth. Thank you for watching Southwest Magazine. Southwest Magazine is a news and public affairs production of CHCO Television.